Hey everybody, welcome back to Junkie Town, and uh, on the uh, Ultimate Feed the Beast Junkie Town server here. And uh, yeah, things are going around great. Oh man, I can see that cage up there. I just recently got, it's kind of laggy on the server at the moment, like as you see, I'm flying around, but yep, yeah, now the engine turns on. I crafted this uh, gravity chest plate using our cool little system from last time and uh, been using it around. It's uh, difficult. It's a little strange to get used to because it's like creative where I can just fly around and zip around. Oh man, look at this. Hold on. I gotta show you this. Um, so there's a boost mode on this. I guess on the other one there was a boost mode, but I never used it. But this is like flying normal and I have haste on, so this is pretty fast of like how fast I can fly around. But then there, here's boost mode. So it's like I'm in hyperdrive flying fast around areas. Zoom. It's pretty awesome. Pretty quick. Uh, I like it. It uses a lot of power. And I have to watch my energy level on the top left because, like, at nighttime it doesn't charge fast enough, or if I'm inside or something, it won't charge enough and my energy level will drop. Um, cause, and the nice thing is with my solar helmet, I uh, can just, you know, sit there and and uh, and charge it up. Um, but it's not as fast as like my jetpack was, but um, when I had the helmet. Um, we are playing in a new patch. There are a few new items, and I kind of want to upgrade at some point. What is it? So I keep my jetpack around in my ender pouch. Um, if the lag stops, hello. Maybe because I was zipping around too much. Um, okay, there's my engine turns off. Oh, this is bad. Um, be right back. I don't know why it's lagging like this. I uh, okay. Be right back. All right. I found out what it was actually. It was um at the at the exact time I was trying to do that. Um, Winehurst here was uh generating a new world using Miscraft. So I was like, why is it suddenly I can't do anything? So uh, it it calmed down after his world spawned. Uh. So anyway, there's a, some new items, and uh, like for instance, I can use an ad, what uses an advanced electric jetpack is this new advanced nano chest plate. So it's basically nano armor, but with a jetpack tied to it. For videos, I think I'm going to use this uh, gravity chest plate because it's not uh, a bunch of jumping up and down and stuff like that, um, and it's kind of nice to control. But when I'm probably playing solo um, off doing stuff it's going to be easier for me not to worry about running out of power and stuff with that chest um, so I might be switching back and forth so I might just craft that nano stuff later on I kinda wanted to run quickly through uh, my automatic B system going on here or show some updates um, in here uh, as you know I'm, I've run everything in my building off of seed oil which I'm kind of proud of it. It was pretty difficult to find the b perfect balance of it all. And I have this kind of uh, rough setup right now. I need to really perfect this room going on. But uh, the way this is set up here is the I color coded it with uh, warded uh, stone here. That's warded stone. Um, and these engines that are flicked down are always running. And the green means that it's self-sustaining where it will constantly produce a surplus of seed oil and then anything past that will absorb seed oil uh, from this tank uh, and uh, but produce more power when doing so uh, so it's kind of like a energy boost I don't think I'll ever need that energy boost but I'm afraid what's gonna happen once I uh, fill up on seed oil I, don't, I mean I don't know what's gonna happen if it, uh, maybe these pipes will clog I'm not sure and then these things will stop yeah, these things will fill up, and then the melon seeds will fill up on this part. So, interesting. I'll have to, uh, oh, and that's why I created the system that way. I can kind of drain it and use a whole bunch of power. But right now, I don't need it, because I have, like, this whole backup battery system using MJs, like the, uh, let's see if I can go back there real quick. Yeah, just real quick. Uh, this is kind of my setup going on here. All these go into uh, 
this kind of pipeline here which goes up into these this array of energy cells and as you see here they're all full um, and I think I only have seven seven of these no wait, eight nine nine of them so whatever nine times six hundred thousand MJ's is what I have and it can push it out you know and the reason they're all connected at the bottom and the top is that way I can um, whoops that way I can pull because um, these max output are 100 uh, I can pull that 900 MJ per tick if I ever needed to up top which is kinda handy dandy pretty neato mosquito there guys it's pretty good and uh, so here's my B room some things changed a little bit I got this light up here I had four spots on the floor where things could spawn and I got that going uh, I'm gonna run quickly through my automated B system uh, so this is an automated apiary if you don't know how this uh, works it's basically a wooden pipe attached to the side where it sucks out the bees and any combs that they have um, using this um, autarctic gate and um, so if there's items in inventory it energy pulls so it pulls them out into this apiary pipe which then has any of the bees go back into itself and then I have the reason I can have them all side by side is because it's uh, cobblestone and stone pipes which are uh, different and don't connect and uh, then I have everything anything else go yellow which is the same thing all the way down the line here and uh, my kind of setup that I got going on now um, I have four whoops man this is annoying go I need to build like a platform here soon uh, tarnish bees are these four here so I have four uh, which produce ten and then I have three copper bees which produce or corroded bees which produce copper and then my last three here I have uh, two industrious and one imperial and imperial creates royal jelly which is needed for um, uh, for things I'll show you that in a second like it's needed uh, I don't think it's needed for these I don't know we'll find out what it's used for and then these use pollen which is another thing I need for and uh, so as it everything runs down this pipe I have just the pollen and royal jelly go which way blue which this ender chest is already processed things so those two don't need to be processed but all combs that these things produce come down the line to this yellow box which is where uh, things uh, get um, where they get processed and they get processed down here I have it set up where the box is down there and there's a um, I'll pull this out whoa crap that was not what I wanted alright whoopsie broke something quick let's see if I put that there okay there we go this is how I have it set up so this is a uh, ender chest and this is just a normal gate and uh, so if the inventory is empty put a redstone signal which then this thing comes on which stops the timer from going off so when there's when this is empty the timer is not flipping and going everywhere um, uh, but when it's something is in the inventory this turns off which turns the timer on which is this is a filter and pulls any of the combs in the chest out and throws them into the squeeze into the centrifuges not squeezers um, let's see here I'll put this back um, after the squeezers are done doing their job I have it where um, this uh, the router down there where I had it put items in you can actually set it to extract items so I have all the items get pulled out of these centrifuges and then I have another pipe down here uh, kind of like the bee chest up there pull them out and put them into the process chest so instead of having pipes and everything go everywhere I'm using inner chests um, this is a temporary setup but as you see it's getting sorted right now uh, the pollen and um, so all the process things go into this chest and they go get sorted through with this um, right now I have it where I'm manually putting in um, honey into the squeezer which then goes into this tank uh, and honey is used for in 
I think right now just one thing I'm using it for. But uh, I have two carpenters set up side by side. One needs uh, seed oil, which I don't know if you saw earlier, but I had a, um, you can kind of see it out of the corner there, um, seed oil come down from here. So this is another reason I have a surplus of uh, seed oil. But to make these impregnated sticks, which are really handy for making either frames or they're used for um, uh, with impregnated casings. Um, is it making? Oh yeah, no, no, no. The seed oil makes impregnated casings or the seed oil makes impregnated sticks. And um, then I use the honey tank for to make these with this. This is where I use pollen and royal jelly for these. Um, scented paneling which scented paneling around these impregnated casings uh, make alvary blocks which is the multi-block um, apiary so it's like a uh, was it a three by three um, apiary um, it's like a three by three apiary and it's pretty handy because then you can have interchangeable blocks and stuff so uh, that's my setup um, in a nutshell I know it might have been a little long-winded, but that's how I'm going right now. And I'm also pretty proud because a lot of these machines use like 100 MJ per tick or something like, what is this one I use a lot? Um, oh, it shows it down here in the corner. Uh, 25 MJ per tick is what it uses, and this one uses 50 MJ per tick. Let's see if there's anything in here I need. Diligent? I think I have a diligent one already. I've been uh, collecting serums. I want My goal is to collect all the serums. Majestic, resilient, noble, tropical, mellows. Majestic, resilient. Do I not have diligent? Let's see here. This will be a good example. If I don't, let's check in these two. If I do, up oh, there's diligent. Um, so I'm not going to keep this since I already have one. But if I were to get something that I didn't have, like a, a serum that I didn't have, that's pretty useful, uh, I would put it into to charge it up. That's where this um, whole setup that I had with the B, uh, the B DNA, the liquid DNA setup. Um, so as I think I showed you before, you put junk bees in here, which then melts them down into liquid uh, DNA, which is this giant tank here, and then I have it set up where they're coming in. Get these two get filled in from the back. So you plop in. Okay, so this is a good example here. To right, it starts off empty, and you want to fill it with these charges. Um, max charges is 16, and then you can see kind of the quality, excellent, excellent quality and good quality here. What you do, um, the synthesizer fills it up with charges, and it uses liquid DNA to do that, and then. This is a purifier, which uses liquid DNA to uh, turn it, uh, the quality of the charge, um, which is very important, to excellent, or the best one you can. If you did not have those charges to be um, maximum quality, when you put the charges into a bee, that's what this inoculator does. If I put my bee here and my uh, serum here, it puts that diligent species into the bee, but if this wasn't excellent quality, it would give it um, these uh, terrible, like, it would give it basically like like bee cancer. I don't know how else to say it, but like, you get bee cancer, and bad stuff will happen, and uh, the, one of the worst things that can happen is the there's no way to breed princesses, and one of the worst things that would happen is it would give it such a messed up fertility that the, it wouldn't produce a queen when it was done, or a princess when it was done, and uh, you would just basically just run out of bees, and it would be done. So it's important to... Uh, oh, I didn't grab those other ones, but what I do... What do I do with these? I used to come over here with these, but now what do I do with them? Um, this is kind of our setup going on right here. Um, I usually put them into a furnace, but I do not have one set up. So, um, I'm going to go to the nether. That's why I have some bees uh, churning in there. So, I will see you on the other side. We actually have a book now to go there instead of a portal, but I still get that 30-second uh, lag business, so I'll see you when it's done. Shabayam. 
All right, I think it stopped because I just saw a pigman die over here. Right now, I have an apiary going with, uh, I think, Sinister Bees, which is, um, I think, one up from the ones you first start with. I'm trying to get these demonic bees in here, but when you get close to them, they do damage and kill you. And you can just see, like, let's see if this guy gets any closer here. Let's see if I can push him over the edge. Hey, go ahead. Go ahead and go over there, buddy. Go ahead and go. Um, up oh, there it goes. So it takes a bit of damage. Um, the one thing to prevent that is I have this Apiarius, um, Ape, Aparius, uh, I don't know how to say that, whatever, um, Apiarius uh, um, suit here. And to make this, let's see if I can hit recipe, is you get this woven silk, which you get from Silk Wisp. And the way to get Silk Wisp is you get it from uh, Silky Propolis, which is... Um, you get from tropical bees or things like that. So I've been collecting it. And you see how it pretty, hurts pretty bad if I tried to go over there. Even with, like, I'll even step in there with my suit on right now. Like, look at that. It did, I mean, it's doing half a heart, you know, pretty often. But I'm wearing, you know, if you look at my armor at the bottom there, I'm wearing, I have full armor on because of all this. Um... So it doesn't hurt me too bad, but I like to just because I have it. Um, what happened to my... Oh, i got to take my stuff off before putting my other stuff on. And now I'm a beekeeper. Buzz, buzz, buzz. It's funny that it's not on my arm now. Oh, I guess it's just part of the, the thing. So now I can ignore the effects uh, when I come in here. It's just like... Uh, just like a normal guy here. Um, I set this up. Um, oh, I guess they're fiendish. I think Sinister is the first one. Um, oh, nice. So it's been running basically all night from last night when I first made these guys. And I wanted to do this so that I could get a bunch of drones so I could get the fiendish um, property. Uh, so what will happen is I'll wait for this thing to be done. And uh, I'm going to... Uh, I don't know. I don't know if I want these right now. But... Uh, I'll wait for this to be done, and then I'll look at the next evolution part of what I need to do, and uh, that's what I'll do. So, uh, be right back. Okay, I found out that's going to take a little bit of a while for them to spin down. I just turned off the gate so that they wouldn't recycle through. Uh, but I remember talking to somebody just recently, and they said that they really didn't understand serums, and I kind of wanted to explain a little bit more detail. I kind of ran through that last part a little fast. Um, so, kind of like you know, beekeeping 101, you get your bee elizer. Um, let's see if I can show you the recipe in a carpenter. This is how you make a bee elizer, um, using water. And uh, after you make it, you uh, put it in your hand, right click on it, and you it needs honey drops or honey dew, which, uh, bees, which happens when you spin down the bees, as you saw um, in here, like one of the products. These are all byproducts of my combs. Um, so those are, and you can, or you could also use this honeydew as well. Um, oh boy, kind of getting lagged there. Uh, so one thing I want to do is kind of show you how I use, or how I'm going to go about bee breeding. Um, there's a little bit of, uh, of course, luck involved, but at a certain point, I'm going to be able to create the per the perfect bees I want and uh, evolve them at will, or mutate them as it as it were. Uh, so one thing, you can actually, uh, I don't know if people know this, but you can actually uh, identify more than one bee at a time if they're the same thing. So these are 49 of the same uh, fiendish drones. I d identify them all by putting them up in this top slot. And then it gives me a bunch of information about them. Um, it gives you the species name, which actually uh, depends, it actually determines on what you get from it. I think it's number three, is the possibility uh, products. So you get those from, uh, you know, this is what I get from these bees when I breed them. Uh, and that's all dependent on the species. Now all these other ones determine what the bee does while it's living, while it's there. Lifespan uh, long, this is, oh, okay, so uh, 
little backtrack, there's an active and an inactive. Inactive is kind of like a recessive gene. These bees aren't going to do these things, but um, they, uh, how would you phrase it? That they have potential if you breed them with other ones to pass those genes along. Uh, but while they're, um, while they're this, they don't do it. Pure bees have the same active and inactive, and that's how you can get those ones to stack. Most uh, hybrid bees where these are different won't stack because they're, of course, different, uh, kind of unique. Um, lifespan of a bee determines how long it takes for them to spin down in that uh, apiary that you saw. Uh, the speed is actually how fast they work. Uh, normal is good. That means that uh, depending like depending on how uh, I don't know how to word this but um, there's uh, slowest uh, slower normal fast and uh, fastest I think there might be faster fastest um, I'm not sure but the faster a bee speed is the faster it works and the faster it produces combs um, pollination is how fast they uh, either pollinate trees in tree breeding, like you, I don't know if I showed any of my trees in my later videos, um, or it's how fast they produce like flowers and stuff. Uh, the flowers determines on what they need to breed on, uh, so these guys require nether, which is uh, nether wart here. Fertility, you either have weak, normal, or uh, maximum fertility, so it's either you get times one, times two, or times four, and that's how many drones that the queen will produce once it's done spinning down as I say it. Um, the area most bees are just a nine times six times nine but I think later on I'm gonna get like a four by four or a one by one uh, but those are gonna be magic bees and very specific. And then the lastly is an effect. This is aggressive that's where you saw that uh, pig man getting hurt and killed. That's what happens while it's doing it. Um, all of these are traits and genes of them. Uh, both the inactive and active are possibilities oops, of getting them when you, using this isolator, I'm going to put these in here. Um, it only fills up one per slot, it won't ever stack. Uh, using these empty serum vials, which I have over here in this, this is how you would make them. There's glass panes, gold, and then this is royal jelly, not a gold nugget. Like this is a gold nugget. Uh, and as I as it spins down, see it gave me it will randomly give me one of those feats or one of those abilities. Oh, also, um, I should actually show you some more traits too because there are more hidden traits in here. In the Bealizer, if you go down to two, it goes even more traits where the climate, the temperature tolerance, and things like that that they require. Um, and uh, this can be changed with serums as well, but you will actually pull, you can actually pull these uh, things out with a serum and put them into people and put them into other things. Um, nocturnal, flyer, cave. Nocturnal means if it will work at night. Flyer means if it will work underground. What means, uh, oh no, no, no. Flyer means uh, if, it, if it works during the rain. If it's raining outside or raining over it, it uh, B won't work unless it has that flyer feet, yes. And a, finally, the cave feet is um, if uh, they work inside or outside with a cover over them or not. Um, let's see if what I got here. For, so using that B thing, sorry, this is, might be a, a lengthy explanation, but uh, doing this uh, spin down with this, with this B, I'm isolating any of those uh, traits I just pointed out, and it will slowly um, slowly pull it using energy. I think it's using 50 per tick. Uh, and thankfully I have that storage underneath. But every time it's done, it will pull one of the, so it pulled a nocturnal, nocturnal serum out of it. Uh, oh, see, that I already got a fiendish species, which is what I'm looking for with this guy. Um, I'm going to put those all in here. Because everything else in here is something I really don't need at the moment. Like, normal productivity, it's not something that I want to save. I'm not going to make my ultimate be with a normal pro productivity. I'm actually aiming for the fastest productivity. And that's where I will put that on all my bees. 
So the one thing I wanted off of this bee, a long life is nice, but you can get even longer life with special bees, which is another thing I'm going to keep and save, is the longest life. And that's only so I don't get a buildup of drones that I don't really need. So after getting the thing I want, I think I showed this earlier, but I'll plop that down, fiendish, into my synthesizer. It will slowly, if you can kind of see the colors here, will build up and then start charging it. Once it's done charging, put it in the purifier. This one's done. And then I will plop it in my chest for, oh, this is yeah, my maximum fertility. I use that one. Effect cancellation, I can actually put that on a drone and it can actually cancel the effect, which on this one was aggression, remember? Um, aggression. So I can actually put that in the isolator and get rid of that if I wanted to, but I'm I'm just going to keep it right now because these are not the bees I'm going to end up keeping and producing, so it really doesn't matter to me if I uh, get it or not. Uh, getting that aggression on a bee it is actually kind of nice in case I wanted to put it on a on a bee, you see how it killed that pigman. If I surrounded like a certain area with, uh, like if I wanted to set up an automatic farm with bees, uh, I could do that. There's certain bees that spawn monsters, and then that one would kill the monster, and then I could have pipes to pick up the stuff. So I could actually set up a whole um, mob farm setting up just with bees. So let's go back to the nether, check on the other bee. All right, I'm back here in the nether. Uh, sorry if I'm talking at you guys a whole bunch. I talked to some people about my previous episodes and they are saying I should explain more that uh, I kind of assume too much of what you guys know and uh, that's why this episode is going to be a bit more uh, chatty um, and kind of long-winded with explanations and stuff. Uh, trying to catch you up on speed and on where I am with the bee, with the bees. Um, Right now, I like I said before, I have uh, Fiendish, but I need one uh, back, which is actually Sinister. And so to get one of those, I need a Modest and a Cultivated to breed together, um, which then has a percent chance. And these Soul Frames there that I put in here increase that chance. And I'll throw these in here. And like I was talking before about um, uh, traits, you can see this one at the very bottom. Uh, cultivated drone has flowers. That's what it requires for it to um, to spin down, or it requires to actually work. Um, these mod this modest one uh, takes uh, cacti or cactuses, which is what you see um, right there on the left. Uh, usually, um, it takes the princess's main one, so it will spin down using this cactus here, which is why I have these three here. One will uh, this one will have it for uh, the modest, if I need to do it again, this flowering will be there for if it turns into just a cultivated uh, uh, princess. And this is for the sinister and fiendish uh, branch here. So hopefully we'll get, yeah, see everything seems fine. Uh, luckily the modest queen uh, likes the hot of the nether enough that I didn't have to change any of its uh, uh, temperature or arid um, uh, wants. There. If you ever need to know what what kind of area you're working in, it's always on the side of the apiary here. It'll tell you temperature hellish, which is 200 percent, 200 degrees, I assume. Um, and humidity zero, no no humidity here. And uh, if you see there the T and the H next to hot and arid, it goes both up one or both one and up one. The both means it can go. The it will work in either. Uh, uh, one hotter than hot, Ooh, dumb pigman, uh, which is hellish, or one d below, which is normal. Um, and then up one arid is like uh, kind of dry, I think is the term. Maybe like that's for deserts and stuff. Anyway, be right back. I want this guy's going to spin down. Alright, so that's spawned down. I guess a gas spawned while we were away. Um, using the soul frames, it uh, had a pretty short life, so it went pretty fast. And so now we have Sinister. Um, and so, let me see if I can identify these things here. Sinister is just a straight, purebred Sinister, and I got two. Um, this should be the same. So, yep, so these these I, will, I could breed and get more of the same and get more Sinister ones. Um, they have a normal life, which takes a while, so I might not do that right now. 
What I'm going to probably do is, because Fiendish isn't that useful, I want to try to keep these two so I could make more of them. Uh, but right now, I'm going to try to breed a Fiendish and a Sinister. Uh, let's identify this Fiendish, just in case. A long life. So this will, the print, the queen will have a long life, so this will take a long time to spin down. Um, and when it is done spinning down, um, I'm hoping to have a demonic. And that is the goal of breeding the Fiendish and Sinister together. Um, and uh, that will be used for some uh, different bees. So it's like a pretty much a big long chain of uh, bee breeding. Um, and we will see how this goes. Oop, that will hurt. I need to stand back. I do not have my apiary stuff on. Um, so I'm going to go back, do some other stuff, check on some bees, do that other stuff. And we will be back with that and see what we get. All right, we're back. And, well, I'm back. I guess it was only a second for you guys. Um, whoop, and it looks like the bees stopped. They're not hurting me. Fiendish. Hmm. That is uh, one down from Sinister. That is not what I wanted. Or that is the one up. Okay, let's analyze these and see where we are. Alright, Sinister, Fiendish. Fiendish, Sinister. Um, oh yes, Fiendish, Sinister. Fiendish, Demonic. So that's pretty good. Um, let's see here. This is ooh, a flammable. I didn't know that. So this is what I want, but let's see. Are my frames gone? You know, it's probably because my frames are gone because of that. Um, what I actually am probably going to do, so I don't lose my sinisters again, I am going to uh, set this back up again. Energy pulse, and I'm going to put this in here. Um, I'm gonna let this run by itself for a bit. I'm gonna get some more frames. Ouch! Um, and we'll come check on this. We're ju I'm just gonna get a couple more bees. Um, it should it should recycle and keep a couple. So, all right, back again. I decided I took this one out the uh, Sinister Queen that was producing. I got an extra drone, which is nice. Um, but I think I'm just going to run these two. It's going to have the same chance of a Finisher Sinister, or Fiendish Sinister. Well, it should have the same chance as a Fiendish uh, Sinister separate. So uh, I'm going to run that. Oh, wait. I got to put these in before I put the bees in. There we go. So, um, with these two, it should, with these soul frames, I just got new ones in here, it should help get uh, demonic. This Fiendish demonic uh, will help if I get another, like if I get the, the princess is um, a demonic at all, like it, even in its uh, uh, secondary. Let's see here. Normal life. It shouldn't take too long. This one has a long life. That's why it's that's good. It's a normal life. Okay. Um, I think we have time, or I have time to show you the result of this. Hopefully, we get demonic bees today. All right, guys. Just a quick bit here before we end uh, the episode. I uh, this is the next day. This rain should only go on for about a minute. Uh, I believe. Yep, there it goes. Okay, it turned off. Chunky set up an automatic um, using some of our bee supplies, which is kind of handy. Uh, there is a rainmaker that can actually create and dis, uh, discharge or dis whatever get you know get rid of rain, as you just saw. So it just started raining, and uh, and after like you know maybe ten seconds, it gets turned off again because of this thing. Uh, so a lot has changed in that one day. I kind of waited around for that one demonic thing to spin down and it took forever But if I finally got it and I uh, stopped recording at that point, but I uh, started building this is uh, finished uh, apiary that I have going on or 
alviary that I have going on. It's the inside of it's the exact same. And the only nice thing is is that these bottom blocks I can interchange with whatever I want to change. And this is a mutator. And if I put um, certain items in here that increases the percent chance of evo um, of mutating. And a nether star gives it uh, increases it by uh, the chance by um, I want to say a total of 50% um, or, or basically it, it um, times 50. It gives a times 50% chance of um, mutating a B and the minimum B has a 2% chance of uh, mutating so it gives it basically putting another star in this block gives it a 100% chance and so that's how I've been getting a lot of my B's now. Um, we have a way to get basically infinite um, I'll recon that'll do for now cool the uh, but we have a way of getting plenty of nether stars so this is how I'm going to be evolving my bees from now on I'm going to be um, except for those other ones I had to do in the nether so I couldn't couldn't do them there um, next episode I might do more with bees as you see here junkie has been doing uh, a bit of work on the town here. I really like it. I just logged it and this happened, this river here. Um, and then I've been working on my river over here. Let's see. And as you see, I'm using my jetpack now, not my thing. I should have switched, but too late. Um, so this is my river thus far. Let's look at it on the map before we go. Um, we'll zoom out all the way, maybe. One more. There we go. So that's what we're looking at right now. It's coming along. I like it. It's being good. Uh, of course, Junkie's not done with the river. It's going to continue and join up over there, that lake over to the west. So anyway, I know this is a longer episode. I hope you guys enjoy it. Uh, let me know if you like the shorter 10-minute episodes I've been doing or these uh, longer style. I tried to explain a lot of bee stuff this time. Um, some people had asked me to. Uh, if this is annoying to you, I will stop it, but uh, if you like it, um, yeah, well, I will keep doing it. Uh, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you uh, next time.